Hey guys, it's Bub here. About two weeks ago, I took a look at ParaOS 8, which was the last official version of ParaOS ever to be released. However, in the last two weeks, I've found out a ton more information about ParaOS and its history and its new developer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at ParaOS Cupertino, which is a newer, quote-unquote, unofficial version of ParaOS. Basically, to sum it up, after ParaOS 8 was sold off to someone who we have no clue who it was sold off to, the project was pretty much abandoned. So someone else whose YouTube channel is named Pear kind of picked up the ParaOS name, the ParaOS logo, and that kind of stuff. However, the person who bought ParaOS from the original developer still technically owns all the rights, all the logos, and the name. So technically this is an unofficial version, however it really depends on who you ask what they want to call it. ParaOS Cupertino is basically a copy of macOS Big Sur. It does have the same icons, the same bar, the same style, so it will be really interesting to see what this looks like. Now it appears here like there are no special loading screens like it would on the ParaOS. It's just KDE Neon 5.19.4. It's just a simple login screen, which I guess kind of ruins the immersion of an Apple-like experience, but oh well, it's just a login screen. It doesn't really matter. Now, of course, before we can take a look at anything, we're going to install the system to our disk. So double-clicking on Install System, we can just go through this. I would say this is like a combination of Mac OS and Ubuntu's installer, but in my opinion, this does look much more much, much more like Ubuntu. We can go ahead and make sure that our keyboard is on English US erase the entire disk as this is a blank hard disk and then go ahead and click install. Now unlike ParaOS 8 there is actually a preview of what we can do here so such as things like take a look at the new pair menu all that kind of stuff and I really think this is good because ParaOS 8 did not have a little slideshow it was just a little text based install. Overall the install experience has been way better than ParaOS 8 in fact the only issue I had was that next button it does have more graphics, more information, and that's what I really like about installing this operating system. Okay, so now we can restart into our fully installed operating system. As we can see here, the environment is called ParaOS Cupertino by the actual developer's name. However, we're just going to go ahead and restart now into our installed copy of ParaOS. After we've actually installed ParaOS, we do get a loading screen. I'm not sure if you were able to see that. It went straight into verbose mode after it, but we did get a little sign. And here we are. We are now in our desktop session installed on our virtual machine of ParaOS Cupertino. As we can see here, this does sort of a little bit resemble the macOS Big Sur login. However, macOS does not have these big texts at the top. Entering the password that we created, we can log in and see our, pre and see our installed desktop for the first time. Opening up the file on the desktop, we can see that thank you for choosing ParaOS 20.09 beta. The first thing that we are going to do though is install VMware tools. We can simply install this like we would on any Ubuntu distribution as this is an Ubuntu or somewhat Ubuntu based Linux distro. Now the first thing that I do notice is that the background of the terminal is actually a transparent glass. I actually do really really like this. I think that this is a very nice feature. However when I go to wiggle it around the screen the glass kind of disappears and that kind of defeats the purpose of it. And now, ParaOS has been officially installed with VMware tools, and as we can see, this very closely resembles Big Sur. In fact, I would rather use this than ParaOS 8, even though this is quote-unquote the unofficial version. Taking a look at the dock, we have the ParaOS Launchpad, which does sort of resemble macOS, however, it does not have like the, the spacing that macOS does. However, we do have the squared off icons like Big Sur does. Some of the apps, though, are missing icons, which I'm kind of confused about, but eh. The next one is downloads. This is just a shortcut. However, apparently it does not exist. However, we do have to remember that this is a beta version of Cupertino. Next, we have pre-installed a Firefox web browser, then Finder, which Finder should actually probably be before the launch pad, but I can't move it up far over. Then we have WenView, which is just like the Photos app, the App Store, which is Discover, Terminal, Info Center, system settings as well as vim which we'll have to take a look at as i've never heard of that taking a look up here we can see that we do have the same glass design that mac os big sur does and opening up about this parentosh yes this is apparently a parentosh we can see that we have pair os cupertino 20.09 we can see the hardware that we have listed here as as well as things like memory energy all that sort of stuff and personally this is very very useful for someone who's been in tech for a long time the only thing that I can click on up here is the pair logo. I can't really open anything on Finder, File, Edit, View. That all just looks like something to show. I can't actually really open those. 
I can control the volume though, and this gives us way more control over our volume than the standard Mac OS one, and I really like that. I can check on my battery, which this is a desktop, so I don't have a battery. I can check my connection and my upload and download speed, and personally, this is a nice thing for me, as I had to use iStat menus on my Mac. Search is basically like Spotlight Search. One thing that I do like about this operating system on the topic of search is if I pressed Command Space like I would on my Mac, I do actually get a search button right here, which is really convenient. I also have the option for a clock and a nice glass calendar. Notifications, which does not really look like macOS Big Sur, as macOS Big Sur has the big pop-out with the widgets. And then Siri, which is not Siri, it's just kind of like a start menu type of thing. Taking a look in the Finder, we can see that opening an app does have a very, very slow animation. But hey, we're here now, and it works. We can see that we do have the glass background, which is very nice. We do have a pear drop, which I've never heard of, and it doesn't actually seem to exist. We have the applications folder, which is very nice. I really wish Windows had like an applications folder, but it just has the start menu. All of these things end in desktop, so obviously this isn't as organized as you would get on Mac OS Big Sur, but it's still pretty organized, and I don't get me wrong, I still enjoy having this here. The rest of the things are here, however, for whatever reason, they don't exist, which is very weird to me. Here is our C drive or our hard drive, and this is where all of our system files are stored. It does look pretty much exactly like an install of Ubuntu with all the weird user folders. And one thing that I don't think Ubuntu has are tags, which is something that I really liked using on macOS. However, it did seem a little tacky as I didn't use it a lot, but it is very nice and I enjoyed it a lot. So thank you for adding this. Opening up the Photos app, we can see that this just is basically Gwen View. There's no special things. Pair Drop, I really would be interested to see how Pair Drop works, but it's non-existent, so I can't really use it. Discover, or the Pair OS App Store, is just, it's not even the Ubuntu App Store. This is something totally different. This is its own thing. I'm not entirely sure what this is even called about. This is just Discover by the Plasma development team. So I'm surprised that this isn't like an Ubuntu Software Center, which makes me wonder, what is this distribution actually based on? The info center is basically what we'd get if we clicked on the pair and then went down to about this parentosh. We can see that there is a lot of nice information here, like I said earlier. System settings is, I think, a little bit different than what you would find in the Ubuntu distribution, which makes me think that this isn't Ubuntu. Here we've got stuff like global theme, plasma style, all this kind of stuff, and everything that we can control, including Thunderbolt, which I'm not sure if that actually does anything. Thunderbolt subsystem is not available, so... I'm not sure if that's just my computer. I think I think I should have Thunderbolt 3 on my motherboard, but like I said, not entirely sure on that one. Taking a look at some of the pre-installed apps, we have Arc, Cubic, Discover, Disk Utility, Emoji Selector, Finder, Firefox, Gwenview, iBus Preferences, Info Center, Input Method, QT5, Assistant, Open on Connected Device, Ocular, OBS Studio, which I really like having OBS Studio pre-installed. Uh, I think that's a great idea. This app, which I'm not entirely sure what that does. It looks like it's the dock, maybe? I'm not entirely sure on that one. KWrite, KWallet Manager, some other manager, KSysGuard, KDE Connect, SMS, KDE Connect, QT5 Designer, QT5 Linguist, Spectacle, System Settings, Terminal, Text Editor, UX Term, VLC, and X Term. One last thing that I want to do is take a look at Vim. What exactly is this? And it appears like Vim is another terminal. I did not know that. However, I can't really seem to close it. So we're going to have to go to pair and then force quit. So now that we've taken a basic look around the operating system, would I use this? Well, maybe this is because this is a virtual machine. But as we can see, opening stuff, the entire screen typically glitches. And it's not really ideal you know it takes a the animations are slow and you see that you saw that glitch right there k win closes unexpectedly so this is a interesting operating system to take a look at but as for using this as my daily driver even though this is a stable release i would not consider this stable enough to be used as my daily driver i definitely think that the ui and everything like that is set out and it is a very nice user interface that i would highly recommend to anyone but the system itself does not seem stable. In fact, it seems slow. I mean, let's just wiggle around this window a little bit. I mean, that was pretty responsive. This is pretty responsive right here. But let's just say, okay, we're gonna close it and we're gonna open Firefox. Clicking on it, it seems like the whole system froze. It bounced up or, and it's just generally not the smoothest experience. 
Pair OS 8 was definitely way more stable and way more smooth than this. However, I definitely think if the developer were to improve the smoothness of this, then I think that we would be we, this would be a great, great operating system. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos. Hopefully we can get back to doing more entertaining videos soon. But for that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.